This week on Three Sides of the Coin, who owns the Ace Frilly makeup? So settle down, you blue Kool-Aid drinkers. <laughs> She's going to fit in perfect with this show. <laughs> This is Three Sides of the Coin, talking all things KISS. I want to rock and roll all night. You're listening to Three Sides of the Coin. So you love the show. Go to itunes.threesidesofthecoin.com and leave your review and rating of Three Sides of the Coin. Thanks. Everybody, welcome back to another episode of Three Sides of the Coin. I am one of your three co-hosts, Michael Brandvold, and as always, I'm joined by Mark Cicchini and Lisa Martini. How are you guys doing this week? Hello. Rock and, Hello. Hello. Rock and roll. Life Rock is and roll good. over. Mm-hmm. Rock and roll over 48. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe you can come to my game tonight. I'm hey, skating in a couple just, 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 I want to show this. See? I don't hate Ace. I've got an Ace Fraley t-shirt. It's the first time I've ever wore it. Very nice, Mike. So there you go. I'm not a hater. Um, you know what? Let's just jump into um, some fan comments here. And there, there's a couple of them that are related to... Actually, I think they're all related to the new episode that just went live today as we're talking about it. Um, this is the related to the uh, is Gene a fan of Kiss? And then um, when when I and another guy were showing our Kiss merchandise on the show. <laughs> um, so first one goes to um, Tom Tobin. I got to tell you guys, my wife makes fun of you guys and makes fun of me for being a fan of your show. Yes, I'm a fan. Where's my 12 step program? See, we actually do have fans. Three? Oh, no, no, 13 now. 13, I because I think Tom volunteered to be fan number 13. Um, then there's a couple comments here from Eric Van Galen. First one was, great section, Mike, spot on about the hope you got for the next album or costumes. At the Creatures era, there was no news and no info here in Europe. Every week, I did look into every kiosk to watch if there was an article about Kiss in it. Year, years after years, still great pre-internet time when you did find some pictures or stories. I mean, I, my, you, you guys know that's the way it used to be. Uh-huh. Well, the one thing I got to, because I read that too, if he thought there was nothing over there, and, I, and I've mentioned it on the show before, I used to drive across town once every two weeks to get Kerrang!, which was right. not distributed in the United States. It was an import only. Yep. And the only reason I took my, you know, whatever uh, money I had in my pocket being in high school and drive across town was to get Kerrang! because they talked about Kiss in a serious way. If you even go back now and look at the Kerrang! issues in the early 80s, they talked about killers. They talked about... Well, I just posted... Remember, I just posted on our Facebook yeah. page that Kiss Killers review. I distinctly remembered, like you, driving to the local head shop, which did the imports, and you'd get your Kerrang! about a week or two after it came out in England, so it was already mm-hmm. old news by that standard. And I remember buying that issue, and that was the only thing about Kiss. And I was just like, oh, my God, that's more news than I've gotten in six months from everything else in the U.S. So that's sort of – what was that gentleman's name? Was his name uh, – the one you just mentioned is – Oh, uh, Eric Van Galen. Eric, if, if – in Europe, I mean, I had to get magazines imported from Europe. Just – I mean, what, what little you saw was all there really was. I mean, I re- to be fair – I think maybe Hit Parader would put something in. By then, Cream was done with Kiss. Yeah, but but let's let's be honest. Hit Parader and Circus were never breaking news. They were always just reprinting press releases that they were given to them. So somebody like Krang would post a blurb about, we heard on the streets that Ace Frehley might be quitting the band. That would never show up in Hit Prater unless there was a press release that said Ace Fraley has left the band. 
Correct, but what they did, and this is the beauty behind Kerrang, was they would talk about, I remember first hearing song titles yeah. in Kerrang, whereas Hit Parader and Circus, um, you know, wouldn't even, like you said, if it wasn't from a press release. Although, to be fair, like I said, Cream, which was my favorite, but unfortunately, they, they were done with Kiss right around 1980-81. At least in Hit Parader and Circus, more so in Hit Parader, because I remember I have a Hit Parader... A couple hit paraders with that still have the Kiss fold out two page poster from the Elder era, you know what I mean? Right. So, and if I remember too, there's a there's a creature creatures era one in there too with Vinny. But 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 let's keep in mind that again that was it was an anomaly. That 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 that, that, <laughs> that was information that they were posting when an album has already been out or it's been announced and it's coming out in the next month, which. I expect to find in Circus and Hit Prater, but what you would get from Kerrang! again is the Kiss is going into the studio we hear next month to work on their next album. You know, that's the type of little blurbs that that I just craved for and that you would only get in, in those magazines like Kerrang! But didn't you think that like Circus and Hit Prater were so corporately driven oh, not yeah. corporately driven but i mean you know they had they were driven by the record this, labels whatever yeah, the exactly. record label wanted yeah. you to print yep. that circuit circus and hit prater did that so there you go here's the eight by ten photo for the new photo shoot and here's the and press here's release the and here's what it's yep. always going to be um raving reviews it's always going to be love for the right. artist you know it, it was it was nothing but a hype sheet and granted listen i bought every issue don't yeah, get so me wrong but it was a different kind of info than you would get from Kerrang! or Metal Forces or, geez, what else would you get over what I'd find as imports? Ardshock. Ardshock, yeah. Ardshock was another one. And it, so, yeah, you're right. I mean, if you guys in Europe think you had no info, oh. please, we were craving your magazines over They had there. the good uncensored info, the the nuggets and tidbits that weren't force fed by the record labels yep yeah. you're absolutely right that's what i was getting at they actually talked to somebody at the label about song titles and recording schedules whereas hit parader was really like you said uh it lisa <laughs> yeah it was like this is the stock photo um and and i guarantee those guys wrote some of those interviews you know what I mean? Those oh, yeah. Weren't <laughs> the cool. the inter- yeah. interviews were just given to them by the record label. Here, print this. Great. Thank you. Remember, we- remember when they had the, the surveys and number one bass player, number one um, number one guitar player and all that kind of stuff? Didn't you ever notice that it would always be the same? Like every year was a different band? Maybe it was a label pushing a certain band one year. Like it, let's say Bon Jovi, for example. Bon Jovi would be the best singer. Richie Sambor would be the best guitar player. And it always yep. seemed to circulate around one band. It, it, Whoever they were pushing that year, you know. You know this, this did that in the seventies. The seventies. I mean, Car- Car- yeah. when Carol Ross was on, um, she she talked about how you know they the press department and the record label would just stuff the ballot box. Oh yeah, and then they would maybe not make one member the number one, so it doesn't look so fixed. You know, like oh maybe the be- the best bass player is somebody else, not Gene, because people might think it's it's fixed or rigged. But especially oh, especially thing- during the eighties, that stuff was I'm sure, and I don't know this for a fact, but I I would bet my life on it, it was all driven by ad dollars. Oh, so yeah. if it, if Atlantic Records was buying the back cover for the next year on Hit Parader, well guess what? Atlantic Records artists always got great placement in polls and surveys and, and everything else. You know, and I and I felt like Krang was not was not like that. They were not driven by the I'm you know, and I'm sure ad dollars had some influence, but they felt more legit. Yeah. Um, Eric's got another comment that he posted right after that one. He goes, I'm now twenty minutes into the show. Uh, was this recorded before the Paul Soul gig? Because I never hear some comments about that event in the previous shows. Just curious how you guys rated that show. I don't think we actually did talk about the show, did we? We talked about it beforehand, but we didn't talk about it after the fact. I can't remember. About the soul gig? I mean, Le- 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 Lisa didn't have her gig with us at that time, so she wouldn't know. <laughs> um, yeah, you know, I, I mean, we can 
go around the table here real quick. I thought it was really cool. The, the, the few video clips I saw, I thought it was really cool. It sounded great. I, I'm excited that, you know, the word I'm hearing is he, he wants to and he's going to go out and do more shows around the country on this. Does that mean three shows or 30 shows? I have no idea. Um, but I would be excited that he's going to do some touring between KISS tours. I would, you know, like you guys, all I saw was what was uh, what was online. I was uh, lucky a couple weeks ago, uh, Keith LaRue was in town uh, to watch uh, the Broncos play the Lions, and him and I hooked up. Did the for Lions it. win that game? Oh, that, damn it, Mike. You're, I can't even <laughs> say anything. You both <laughs> you Oh, give, 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 give it time, Lisa. You'll pick up the rhythm of the show here. <laughs> I was going to say, boy, did, wow. Are they winning any games yet there? I'm sorry. Uh, I'm sorry. Uh, I have no room to talk. To say. Sorry, continue on. <sighs> sorry. Hold on. I have to dry my tears. I'm... <laughs> But, uh, yeah, after last night, Jesus, effing oh, Christ, I couldn't fucking believe it. And anyways, uh, Keith and I had dinner, and, and I asked him about the show, and I'm sure he wouldn't mind me you know, talking about it. He just said it really went well. The band sounded great. And, uh, you know, obviously uh, Paul's hoping to, you know, because it, it went so well, Paul is hoping to do some, you know, maybe do it uh, somewhere else or whatever. But I, my point is, um, judging by the conversation I had uh, with with him, that that, that wasn't going to be the last one. Yeah. So. Well, I, I didn't realize this, but he did record it. He's going to release a live DVD of yeah, that I, first I, performance. Mm -hmm. So that'll be I, cool. I thought it was great. The thing I liked about it was for the Paul sang in his vocal range. He wasn't straining. He wasn't not that you know. The, he wasn't eighties kiss Paul Stanley. Well, yeah, I mean, but he's, you know, he's how you know he's been singing for how long now? He all the songs that were in his range, and he just sounded so good. Like he just there was no straining. There was no trying to reach a note. It was right. all like it was. I thought it was fantastic. You know, it was it kind of took me back. I was like, wow, that's really really good. But he sang in his comfort zone. You know, not that he doesn't sing well with Kiss, but I think he chose that to show off that he still has the pipes. You know? I just think it was great that he did something so yep. not Kiss. Yep. So completely not Kiss. He's not jumping around on stage screaming. He wasn't even playing guitar. You know, he's singing these songs that he as a kid grew up and was influenced by. And for me... Of all the Kiss guys, that's what I love is when I find out what what influenced Paul Stanley because then I go listen to those bands. Okay. Um, so I got another comment from Richard Friend. He goes, stirring comment but serious question. Do people think in Gene's heart he wishes the band would end with the original four? Does the fan in him see that as the perfect ending for Kiss? Not in the state that the other two are in, no. Why? Why would they have to do that? I, if I tell you what, if there I'm, is, I, I don't think it's a matter of do they would they have to do that. In his heart, is that what he wishes they could be able to do? Um, I think, in my opinion, if you judge by what he read in his book. Or what he wrote in his book, um, he seemed to want them to go out that way back then. I don't know if things have changed. I would say that the sticking one would be more Paul than anybody else. Um, you know, I, I actually think now, I think their hearts have changed. I think now they'd want to blend it right into the Kiss 2.0. I don't, you know what I mean? Because if they did a last show per se, um, which I think they're going to do, but if they do, um, I would, as a fan, I would like to see everybody, Bruce, involved. And, you know, I'd like to see Eric's family represented, you know, Eric Carr's and even Mark St. John's family represented. Just, you know what I mean? I would like that. But, you know, I think that, no, I think now they'd want to meld it into what it's going to morph into eventually. Well, that's what they wanted for the Hall of Fame. Gene wanted, you know, the Paul and uh, Paul, Peter and Ace, and Eric, Tommy, and Bruce. 
Yeah, you want, but, they, they wanted to honor the entire right. band's history. Which they should have. And they should have, and the Hall of Fame said no. Well, it's only the four original members, and... Uh, of course, if you played tambourine in the Bruce Springsteen band, you got fucking put on. You can play the triangle. If you yeah. wrote lyrics for the Grateful Dead... Yeah, I, I, you can go on. If you go back through that, what a sham that fucking That's thing is. The, the whole, the whole, you know, I, I think not looking at what's happened with the band and all that other stuff, just if you said in Gene's heart, would he wish that? Yeah. I, I actually think in Paul's heart, I bet he wishes they could have gone out that way too. Well, yeah. But, but, if, but, but if, obviously things didn't. Uh-uh. didn't go that way but if he could sit here and go well gee i've got a magic wand to make things ideal exactly how i want uh-huh. i'm gonna wave that magic wand and i'm gonna make peter and ace not screw up and it's gonna be all we're, we're gonna be like the monkeys and we're gonna all be happy together and we're gonna go out the top of the world as the original four members of kiss the way well, we I came think, in i think that's what they wanted to do in the reunion tour I think that's what they had their hearts set on, that they're, this is going to be great, we're going to get along, maybe, you know, we're going to, everything's going to be great now, everyone grew up and sober and whatever, but obviously that didn't pan out that way, and well, I think Paul, it, said, Paul okay. said that book, he, he, it wasn't until, you know, after, or during the farewell tour, he's like, well, why do the actions of one or two have to dictate what we do? I still want to keep going. Yep. And, I, and, you know, and I actually applaud that. He's absolutely right. Just because someone on the team doesn't want to be on the team anymore, you, you get watched, another pitcher. I watched Ace, you know, I was uh, backstage for a show in Erie, PA. And my, fr- uh, my friend worked for Skid Row. So he's like, yeah, come on back. You know, just stand right here. You know, just don't say anything. So I just stood there. I, you know, I'm not going to get anybody's way because as soon as you make eye contact, they're going to tell you to leave. So I just kind of watched what was happening. And, and Gene and Paul came out first um, alone. They came out by themselves. Paul signed a few things for somebody. Uh, then Gene came out. Then Peter came out alone. And he walked out. And it's showtime. Like Doc's out there and Tommy Thayer was there. And someone was screaming from the stage, where the hell is Ace? And someone said, just go already. We'll go on without him. Because, you know, this is when they came down from the center. So they gone, they come down from the right. rig at the center. And they're just like, just go on without him. So I'm like, oh, shit. Like, Ace isn't here. Like, oh, my God. He comes walking out from the backstage area. There was a, a six-foot banquet table up against this wall right before you went around the corner. He bitched and complained that he had a rock in his boot. And he was not going to go out on stage until the rock was taken out of his boot. And there, and no one's there. And he's there sitting on the table. There's a rock in my boot. I'm not going on. And I'm like, don't look at him. Just whatever you do, don't look like, don't just pretend like we're here for a reason. He complained for five minutes. Someone asked him, I'm like, just take your boot off. Get the rock out. Put it back on and get the hell out. What is the problem? Someone had to run, take his, and this person's like, Dumping the rock out, putting his boot on. But they, I think it was that, that little bit of drama that just took them over the edge. I mean, really? Just it, just take your boot off, shake it out, put it back on. You had to go through all that drama for that. You know, and I was like, that's when it really hit me, like, oh, this is not a good situation. You know, I mean, you look out on stage and you see them playing and, you think, well, some people thought, oh, God, look how they love each other. They're, yeah, they're pretending oh, so nicely they, on stage. They're but They're so euphoric. They're so excited. And I just witnessed what I saw. I'm like, oh, they hate each other. Oh, my God. I mean, just yep. the drama of this boot. If, if, if more fans were able to experience that type of stuff backstage, like, like we've seen over various shows, many shows, you would realize there is no magic. No, we, we talk about this all the time. There is no magic. Mm. Uh, listen, the very last show of the farewell tour of the original four, I remember standing backstage when the show was over and the four guys come out of the dressing room, cleaned up street clothes, and and Peter and Ace just turn and walk away, go down one hall, and Gene and Paul stay. There was no, 
I don't, there was nothing said. There wasn't even eye contact. And, I, you know, what? I was there with um, a few other guys. Russell was there. A lot of people were backstage. And I think we all were like, this Oops. is just really yeah. odd for the very last show of the U.S. Farewell Tour. And, and everybody pretty much knew that was also going to be the last show of the original oh, yeah. four, just because you knew what was going up heading up that last week up to that show but when even when peter put the little teardrop the on his teardrop, eye teardrop you know it was just like there is no freaking magic between these four guys my there, friend, there, there's magic between gene and paul i don't even think there was magic between ace and peter at all i think they just hung out because they were the opposite side so they had to but I don't think there was a lot of magic and a love going on between those two. And as we read in Peter's book, he was freaking pissed at Ace. Mm -hmm. Yep. It was an odd situation. I mean, and, and I wish that more, I mean, I not I feel bad for, but to witness that and to know that, you know, I listen to what a lot of fans say and, you know, they... I wish they could have seen exactly what was happening because I think it would have shed a lot of light on a lot of things uh, about just the disgruntledness that was happening amongst the four of them. I mean, I think in all honesty, in the beginning, they wanted it to work. And I think for a little while it did. But then the demons came back in again and the greediness and, um, and a lot of the problems that, you know. Lisa, let's be honest. Every single problem that happened in the 70s, every single problem came back in the history, late history history repeated it's itself it's identically from, from yep. over marketing to drug and alcohol so, issues reared its ugly head like and that's why yep. my friend who was working with skid row would call me after every show and go it's the end is near the end is near because i know you don't want to hear it but the end is near because this well, is just hell to be yeah. fair i mean one thing that i think it's uh worth noting and I can think of a couple of examples you can easily find on YouTube. This problem isn't just Kiss's problem. Some of my favorite bands, the magic was gone too. And fortunately, there's video evidence. Matter of fact, a few months back, maybe even uh, six months to a year ago, I posted a video on the Three Side site of Richie Blackmore throwing a water bottle at Ian Gillen like the day before their, he left the tour. There's also a very famous uh, Ted Nugent clip when he played the Cal Jam. Derek St. Holmes, who sang Stranglehold in those songs, he has his back to Ted the entire show. He wouldn't even look at him in the Cal Jam show because that was it. They were contractually, that was the last show he was going to do with him in 78. So, like I said, maybe not as dramatic, well, Blackmore's was, but as, but, but Peter wearing the, the teardrop and the arguing and, and, and the stuff like that, other bands did that stuff too. Listen, the, the Mot Motley Crue's Carnival of Sin, the reunion tour, there was no love there. There was four separate tour buses. Each guy had his own tour bus because they wanted to travel separately. Uh -huh. They did it because it made sense business-wise. There was a lot of money to be made. They put up with it. Each guy had their own manager. There was no one single band manager. I mean, so, yeah, Kiss is not the you rarity. Need that. I yeah, mean, mo mo when most bands get to 20, 30, 40 years together, there's not love there because, you know, it, it is true. It's, it's a three-way, four-way, five-way, six-way marriage. And if you're not having sex for, with your partner for 40 years, <laughs> you know, there's, there, why, why are you doing this? There's just a lot of pent-up frustration and anger. I can answer that. Did you see, this is very timely, um, Paul did an interview on an Australian TV show this week. Matter of fact, I think I watched it yesterday. And they asked about friendships and stuff. And Paul said, Michael, much like you were just pointing out, said, Gene isn't my friend. He's my brother. And, you know, so sometimes you can be mad at your brother, but you still love him. Unlike a friend, you just don't want to talk to him anymore. I think that's what he was pointing out. Sometimes Gene drives him crazy, but he's family to him. But there's and respect. Right. Too. And but but, but that yes. that that also means, and there's a lot of people who have relationships in their family, 
that you don't hang out and spend every day with your brother or your sister. You don't have the same likes and same interests. I think that's why he chose that. Because yeah, so it's a it's a better it's a better example. So yeah, there's love there, there's respect there. You will always have my back, and I'll always have your back. But I don't want to go hang out with you. I don't want to I live see. in the same house with you. Exactly. <laughs> you know, that goes back to what you guys said in the last show about the difference between Paul and Gene. How Gene has to have all of his kiss merchandise displayed. And how Paul is just kind of, um, it is what it is. He doesn't have to have all that to, to feel himself, you know. And I thought that was a really good point, um, the difference between them. When, I think it was when um, Gene said, you know, I have some of these kiss stuff. Do you want to take them for your, for your kids? And Paul's like, no, nah, I'm good. You know, I mean, that's the difference between them. And I think that's what makes it work because you have one on this side of the spectrum and one on this side of the spectrum. But uh, and, it and, 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 bo respect. and both of them respect the fact that they that's are different, and that's fine. I don't, Paul doesn't have to get mad that Gene wants one of everything, right. and Gene doesn't get mad at Paul because Paul doesn't want anything. Right. You know, they respect that's that. In, that's in any relationship. It's all about just it's just respect, you know. And I think that that's how this, working in a band is. Um, you know, you don't have to be their friend, but you might not have common interests outside, but you do have one common goal. You know, right. and, and that's and that's what their one common goal is. You just have to respect each other. You know, I mean, didn't it, didn't Paul get married and he didn't even ask Gene to come to the wedding, right? When he Correct. got married this last time, because he, I mean, mocked that, the institution of yeah. marriage. So now, imagine that. Imagine that. Uh, you know, when I heard that, I was like, shit. I wonder if Gene was like, well, you know, damn. But he I said, basic. He just was like, listen, you don't. I don't want you there if you're not going to support what I'm doing. But there was no hard feelings. They didn't hate each other and, you know, whatever whatever happened. But I thought, you know, that's a really great, you know, analogy of how just the whole respect factor. That's for, for husbands and wives and relationships, you know. Do you think my husband really gets my whole KISS fandom? No. But. Or, it, exactly. It's a, but he loves you just like Liz, my wife. Trust me. Hey, maybe we should put you two together. <laughs> <laughs> but like Liz was like this is something that makes you happy and it's no different than sports or whatever because I used to joke when, when, when Liz and I were first married and first I said you know Liz's hobbies are watching me do my hobbies because I was the kiss stuff playing sports you know playing hockey four nights a week when we first met and, and you know just all this I was always on the go doing something and it, and it wasn't the fact that, you know, she loved Kiss, but she knew how, how, how happy it made me. Now, Michael, what about with, uh, with your wife? I, mean, I was just going to ask you, know, like, too. You know, she is not, she's not a Kiss fan. She's not even a big fan of music at all. She doesn't. But see, so that's got to be weird for you because you're obviously a big music fan. But you know what? It doesn't bother me. It's like if she's like, no, go to a show if you want. It doesn't bother me if you're going to go and I'm not going. Or she's like. I'll go to the show. I remember we went and saw Cheap Trick, and she sat in her chair and, and read her Kindle for the entire show. But she went because but of she, you. But she went, and I was like, "That's fine. I'm not going to get mad at you because that's what you're doing." But you Can came. I? You came because you wanted to come with me. You know, it's it's respect. It's like, yeah, you know, you 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 tolerate it, whatever words you want to use, but you don't get pissed. Right, and that's the that's exactly right. I took my husband to this very. I've been coming, going to kiss shows since I was very young, and I never took a significant other with me. I never took a boyfriend. I took my ex husband with me. We had front row for the reunion tour, and I'm I'm thinking, oh my god, front row for the reunion tour. This is like the greatest moment of my life. And I looked over at him, and he just leaned up against the rail like he could be doing so many other things at this point. And I thought. Wow, this is not going to be a good situation. But that ended obviously rather quickly. But I took my husband to the show what, two years ago here in Atlanta, and I never ever take anybody to shows with me ever. So he's like, "Well, I want to go with you." I'm like, okay, are you ready? Because like I will ignore everything around me when I'm at a kiss show. You're gonna you're gonna see the the beast come out of me I when when the, I go, the lights go see, down. You're gonna see me. You're gonna see. You're going to see me in my happy place. Not that I'm not happy with you, but this is, this is Lisa. 
And he videotaped me without me knowing. And he said, Lisa, he goes, I just watched you the whole show because you had so much fun. He goes, you were so happy. And just, you, a guy was happy because you were so happy. And I thought that was cool. But again, this goes back to the respect, you know, and you don't have to like it. You don't have to, you know, he, he, he looks at my kiss stuff and he's like, could we sell this one day and maybe put the kids to college? You know, <laughs> I said some of it, yeah. But you know, I, he respects me. He respects that, and he respects the, the, you know, my hobby. I don't go to as many kiss expos as I used to go to because I used to go to a lot. Well, but there were. Not, there's not as many. There's not that many. But I was the same. I mean, because I'm a music junkie. I mean, I was literally going to a gig a week, and I remember Liz went with me to like suicidal tendencies. And oh, shit like wow. that. Wow. Yeah. I did. I, you know, I, I used to. You were really stuff. testing her, weren't you? Yeah. I mean, she, <laughs> trust me, she, she's been a trooper. She's been. But I uh, could see Liz getting right on in that, though. I could see, <laughs> I could she was more amazed by. But you know what, though? Like, my wife, much. Here's where, here's where the common bond is. I like, and I mean, if you look at my iPod, I love everything from, you know, swing big band to, to speed metal. Right. And I like rap and I like soul and I like country. You and don't I, like crazy nights. Who Go figure. Because crazy nights is horrible. But, <laughs> <laughs> but, but I mean, I can really fit in. It's funny, too, because um, we just, uh, over the summer, we saw Harry Connick Jr. And the first time we'd seen Harry Connick Jr., I think we either just got married or we were dating. It was like early 90s. I mean, he was a kid when we saw him. And because I'm a big Sinatra guy. Matter of fact. I love Frank Sinatra. One, one of the, one of the, I, I saw Sinatra at the Fox. And I have a funny story with this one. Uh, Liz and I went and saw Alice Cooper on the Trash Tour. At uh, this is this is what I mean. I, I, she went to all the shows with me. Um, we've been, we started dating in 88. So from 88 on, she actually went to like pretty much everything until our, our son was born in 92. Matter of fact, when she was pregnant with Ian, we went and saw Ozzy. <laughs> I, saw, I saw Alice Cooper when I was eight months pregnant. Yes. Well, it's funny. We pregnant. went to the doctor and, and my the doctor's like, no, the baby will be fine. You know, so don't worry about that. So it was funny because we, you know, we went, like I said, we saw Ozzy. But we went and saw Alice. And then a week later, it was uh, Sinatra's very last tour. And... Uh, you know, I just thought it was such a strange dichotomy, and we pretty much had the same seats in the balcony for both shows, and just, you know, everyone at the time, I remember, it was a very, obviously, the Sinatra crowd was very old, you know, I had my long hair, I wasn't wearing it in a ponytail or anything then, and I got a lot of weird looks, but um, I got a funny story with that, which I'll share with you guys offline, it was pretty funny, but uh, since it is a KISS podcast, we'll get back to the KISS show. Well, I want... So um, Richard had one more real funny comment. Then we'll get we'll kind of segue into something you just talked about a little bit earlier. So Richard had one more comment. He goes, "I like tired Mark. He's sassy." <laughs> <laughs> he goes, "Quote: I've got my peanut butter filled pretzels and my iced tea. Let's do the fucking show." He goes, "That was funny." <laughs> that was very funny. Yes. <laughs> uh, I tell you, I was uh, I was so fucking tired last Monday. Oh my god. Because uh, I, I, my, uh, the company I own, the my employees had to drive across state, but I have to have them on the job early, so they had to leave the shop real early. So I'm getting there, you know, just before 5 a.m. And I was up. I went to the Lions home opener and got out of there. You know, by the time I got home, it was like fucking one o'clock. Slept for like three hours. Worked all day. Come home after a 10 hour day. You know, hang out with these knuckleheads. And I was just like, fuck. Well, at it. least now it's going to be prettier. Yes, yes, it's it's much prettier, thank God. <laughs> so you know, you know, today's we're back to our little bit of our normal schedule, and uh, I did get some compliments on I'm sitting in the uh, the hallowed halls of my kitchen instead of, uh, but I but I did bring up some some stuff we're going to get to later on in the show. So hopefully you guys uh, dig that. But yeah, I thought that was funny too. But man, I tell you what, last show I was just like I had fucking blinders on, I'm like just gets fucking through this thing and we'll be done. <laughs> <laughs> See what Mark does for you guys. That's right. And That's gals. Right. Yeah. And of and course, though, too. Salute us, the ladies. My God. There you, there you go. And then and then you get called, oh, you want to be a rock star? I, I, I'm telling you, it's still fucking. It's not that it <laughs> pisses me off. Don't it's piss like, Mark off when he's tired. Exactly. Yeah, you, I, was, yeah like, I, heard a little, I had to listen to a little bit of it because it wasn't on Vimo this time. 
Yeah, no, wait, I, Mike. I was, <laughs> I, I'm one of those people that buy it because I like to listen to it early. So I only listened to like um, 45 minutes of it today. I didn't get all the way through, but yeah, I heard about the rock star part. That's yeah, well, I got know, that part. It's 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 no different than the people I think that that write in and bitch about fucking everything. It's like you you got time in your day to tell people how they are thinking or how, what they're trying to convey. Why the fuck do we even have to read stupid shit like you know, that? This podcast is supposed to be fun. And you're supposed it to listen to it and laugh and have fun with it. Just like I do. And just like I hope everybody else does. Well, you, you are to going to bring that fun to the show now. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, and you know, I noticed the cat is out of the garage. Okay, because that is, what, is that does that mean something? <laughs> <laughs> the cat is out <laughs> of the garage. <laughs> Keeping it clean that, this week. That was so annoying. Oh my god! But but Mike, your comment was so funny. Oh my god, I was dying, and Mark's reaction was even funnier. We saw we, we 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 had Mark quiet there for a moment, well, didn't we? I'm a good Catholic boy. Okay. Oh my God, it was so funny. He was thinking it; he just wouldn't say it. Oh boy! Hey, look. <laughs> All right. Anyways, next anyway, stuff. anyway. So, so Mark mentioned um, an interview Paul Stanley did, and one of the topics we want to talk about is related to something that he did bring up in that. And this is something. I've been sort of having on the back burner as a topic I wanted to talk about for the longest time because I'm just tired of hearing the crap around this. Um, so last week, Paul Stanley did an interview with um, 4KQ in Australia. I don't know if that's a radio station, a TV station, what. Um, but I'm reading from ultimateclassicrock.com. And we'll put this link up in the notes for the show. And it talks about one of the comments he talked about. The headline is, Paul Stanley, Ace and Peter sold their Kiss makeup rights for, quote, not a whole lot. So this is about who owns the makeup for Ace and Peter. As the controversy rages among Kiss fans over whether Tommy Thayer and Eric Singer should wear the makeup made famous by Ace Frehley and Peter Chris, Paul Stanley defended his band by saying that the answer is simple. In a new interview, he said, Kiss owns the rights to their Spaceman and Catman characters, which they bought from the former members for a song. Speaking to Australia's 4KQ, Stanley said, quote, The guys basically sold it off for, you know, not a whole lot, because they didn't think it was worth anything. Quite honestly, I've always thought our image and what we represent is priceless. It didn't matter to some people. It truly matters to me. Stanley added that being in a band is no different from being an athlete on a team where the lineup changes are natural with the passage of time. If somebody is out, somebody else comes along, he said. I don't think that when you go see your favorite team, you're yelling that you want to see somebody who was in the team 20 years ago. Time moves on, but the team lives on. I didn't invent the wheel. Somebody's out there who can come in and take my place. I don't see a reason for the band to fold any more than I can see a reason for a team to fold. Uh, last year, Fraley said that he was looking to acquire the rights to the Spaceman makeup in the near future. Stanley quickly shot down the notion on Twitter. Um, and it shows two tweets here. A tweet by Robert Parisi, who's who is asking Gene and Paul, does Ace own the rights to his makeup, or is he just babbling again? Paul Stanley replied, fantasy, we own it, he sold it. So this is like one of those topics that refuses to frickin' die no matter how much facts are presented to some people. So preach it, Mike. Give us, because we know, we know. A, all right. Ace and Peter sold their makeup to Kiss. Kiss owns it. Simple fact. Go search U.S. trademark. So you can go do this online. You can search all trademarks are online. You can search for three sides of the coin and find the trademark for three sides of the coin that I own. You can find that Kiss Corporation owns the trademark. Owns. Not license, not not borrows, 
owns the makeup for Jean, Paul, Ace, and Peter. It's there. Simple facts. That's not Paul said, Jean said, Ace said. The U.S. trademark database shows it's owned by the KISS Corporation. Plain and simple. I mean, that should be enough to shut up most people, but there's clearly some people that facts don't mean anything because then they come back and say, oh, no, Ace said he licensed it to Gene and Paul. He does not license it to Gene and Paul. And and I can tell you, having worked in the license, licensing area of entertainment, bands, specifically the company that that manages and, and licenses the KISS likeness, meaning the KISS logo, the KISS image, the KISS brand, KISS licensed that to a company. At the time, it was Signatures Network. That company paid KISS some money for the rights to that license. They don't own it. They just have a license to it. KISS still owns the makeup. As the trademark shows, it's owned by KISS, although there is a company today, it's a company called Epic Rights, that manages the license for KISS. Therefore, if Ace Fraley had licensed his makeup to Gene and Paul, to KISS, it would be owned by Ace Fraley or whatever his company name is, Max Cake or whatever business entity he's created would own it and it would have been licensed to Gene and Paul to use Gene and Paul would be paying a fee back for that license right but Ace has all ownership and rights to do whatever he wants with that makeup he's not doing anything with that makeup you have not seen Ace put his makeup on the anomaly or space invader or any posters or any photos or t-shirts or anything he sells. But believe me, if he had that makeup, it would be on many of these items because it would add value to it. People want, I, I, I would bet if he owned the makeup rights, he'd be selling meet and greets where he'd be wearing makeup. He may not be performing in makeup at a show, but you could go like, to the horror convention and meet Ace Fraley in makeup because he could probably charge $200 for one photo. Well, kind of like what Vinny tried doing. Look well, how quick Yeah, started. what he tried to do. And Kiss, you're right. Kiss shut him down because Kiss owned the trademark to the Vinny makeup. And I lived it. <laughs> you lived it. You saw it. We've got somebody else coming up in the, in the, in the near future who's, who also lived it. So Kiss owns the trademark to the face, to the design, the makeup, not to Ace Fraley and not to Peter Chris. to the face. They can't, they can't use Ace Fraley's name. They can't use Peter Chris's name. That's a person. But they can, own, they can use that makeup all they want because they own it. And so one thing that gets thrown out by a lot of people is, well, then what about the Dunkin' Donuts commercial that Ace was in in makeup? I don't know specifically, but I would bet Dunkin' Donuts licensed the makeup from Kiss, paid Kiss a fee, got the permission for Ace Fraley to use it, to wear it. It could have been anybody wearing it. It could have been anybody. Just like any company goes out there and pays Kiss a licensed fee for the makeup to create product hello and kitty the logo. And, he and the too. logo i mean hello kitty paid a license fee to use the makeup the the make your 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 fragrance company paid yep. a fee to license the logo and the icons and all that stuff dunkin donuts was nothing more than another product that called up kiss and said we want to do a commercial how much is it going to cost to put the makeup on no, no guys, probably threw out a figure you also have to remember that it's a big world, and sometimes they just don't get to it right away. That commercial, because I've also heard that they just, you know, they didn't want to deal with the ace thing about the commercial. I heard that from somebody that would have, you know, um, this is a while back, that they just said, you know what, by the time it came out and everything, because it was also short-lived, it wasn't oh, something. Yeah. It wasn't even worth it. And I'm going to give you a real hands-on example. If you go to Amazon right now, 
you go to Amazon, the big world retailer, they sell effing bootleg records, regular bootleg records that they press up wherever they press up, they're selling them. Either Kiss hasn't gotten to it yet, or they just don't feel that it's worth their time. My point is, also look at things, excuse me, if also look at things like the uh, that lost concert DVD. That stuff gets gets out there, and then they've got to shut it down. So things do go out. Kiss, especially in a world like ours now, where there's information going everywhere, they can't be everywhere at all times. So if you see stuff like maybe that commercial, or if you see bootleg records being sold that uh, that live at the Ritz thing, um, like I said, you can go to Amazon right now and pull it up. Um, Kiss just hasn't got there yet. And they also have to pick their battles, too. You know, they have Correct. to pick I mean, their they battles. They have to stick they a can't... lawyer on it. That's going to cost them money. Yeah. So they got to pick their battles. Correct. So that's my point. But something like Michael said, you know, Kiss has the rights to the Catman and the Spaceman, if you want. They don't have the rights to Peter and Ace, per se. But they certainly do have the rights to that makeup. And there's not a damn thing anybody can do about it. They Kiss. own it consensus on the kiss my ass record remember what you know what 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 i had heard because that's another thing i'm glad you brought that up you're you're fitting in very well here with this team (laughs) um because a lot of fans not a lot but the fans who try and discount this ownership will throw that out there and go well see gene and paul don't own it they couldn't use it i had heard that they could use it but ace and his lawyers were raising a stink and Kiss and and Universal, Mercury Records at the time, just said, screw it. It's not worth the battle. It's not worth the headache. Um, just take it off and, hey, you've got that bandit makeup. Let's put somebody in the bandit makeup. Problem solved. We well, don't I have to I deal with make- lawyers. We don't have to – no additional – because at that point in time, would it have been – I don't know who would have been fronting the bill, probably the label – because it was their album cover, their release, and they probably said, "Listen, we don't want we don't want to delay this release because it's going to take six months of legal back and forth. We don't want to pay lawyers for this. What are our options? Can we take the Ace makeup off? Okay, take it off. Problem solved." Well, that was probably the first time that's ever come up, too. I mean, that I'm aware of. Yeah. No, I mean that was the first time I've ever seen um, Kiss makeup on an album after they took it off. That was probably like, whoa. That's probably maybe why Ace uh, brought that up, and then they're like, uh, you know, let's not fight it right now. Let's probably put our ducks in a row. Well, cle- case- clearly, oh. clearly since 96 onward, there's never been a case where um, we're not going to use Ace's makeup or Peter's makeup on something. And believe me, if he licensed it to Kiss, he still owns it, and he controls the usage of it. He has final approval over how the makeup would be used by the person who's who is licensed to. So meaning KISS licensed their makeup to Epic Rights. Epic Rights is out there cutting all these deals on what can happen with it. But KISS still can say, no, I don't want my face, my logo used on that product. It's not happening. Ace could, if, if Ace still owns it, at any point in time, Ace could sit here and say, I'm sorry, Gene and Paul, I don't want my makeup on that product. Mm-hmm. Oh, I don't want my makeup on Tommy Thayer. And if that's true, and if this is true where he licensed it out, he'd be a rich man right now. And he wouldn't be complaining about not having any money. Because how long has that been going on where Tommy's been wearing that, you know, the makeup? 13, and if they had 12, to pay him, years. If he had, they had to pay him for, for that, my God, he'd be a wealthy man. But instead, he, you know... Maybe not so, so much. So, I mean, I'm, I'm sorry all of you blue Kool-Aid drinkers. <laughs> and it's not so much the, the green Kool-Aid drinkers. The P, the Peter Chris fans are not really up in arms about this. It's Well, it's, our next topic may change that. Yeah. The, 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 the blue Kool-Aid drinkers, stop. You can't keep coming up with stupid excuses. You have no, every fact out there proves you wrong. 
just it 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 doesn't mean you have to you can still hate the fact that Kiss is putting Tommy in the makeup. You can still hate all of that. That's fine. Go for it. But it doesn't change the fact that Ace doesn't own the makeup. Just accept that. That's reality. He doesn't own it. It's owned by Kiss. They can do whatever they want with it. It's not reverting back to Ace Fraley in 10 years. It's not. He doesn't have control. He has nothing. It's owned by the Kiss Corporation, of which Ace Fraley is not part of. I remember Preach. when I, re- I remember when Richie uh, Rano did the Kiss Expos, and he would use the Kiss logo, um, and he got a call from Gene Simmons and said, "You have to alter that by twenty five percent, or you have to pay me for the use of it." So if you notice, in the past years, in the eye of Kiss, he did the Statue of Liberty because that he was able to fulfill that twenty five percent without actually having to pay to use the KISS logo, which I thought was actually... And if you've noticed, um, you can't call it a KISS convention. No, it's a KISS Expo. KISS convention is trademarked Uh and owned by KISS. KISS Expo is what the the fans can do. Now, that was called KISS convention, and then after they started their own KISS convention, Richie again told me that he has to change the name because now KISS convention is... Owned by Kiss now. If you ever want to spend some time online having fun, um, go head over to the trademark database online and start searching. You'll 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 find a lot of stuff that um, Kiss has trademarked. I remember. Um, I don't know if it was the Sonic Boom album. I know it was for sure the Monster album. It was revealed in the trademark database that Kiss had trademarked Kiss Monster. And a lot of people were speculating that was going to be the next album because they had trademarked it. So you can you can dig up a lot of hints about what Kiss or anybody is doing or was planning to do because there might be trademarks for things that never happened. It's sort of like when people go online and search for um, patents that Apple owns to see what kind of products Apple might be developing because they just patented this interesting thing. I'll go in there and see what trademarks KISS owns. Mm -hmm. Maybe they own KISS hotels, and you're like, oh, okay. At some point in time, somebody was thinking of doing KISS hotels or is going to. You know, I'm sure KISS Cruise is trademarked, I would bet. And if you don't patent it or you don't put a trademark on it, it's public property. Well, it... It, they, it, it becomes a gray area because you then are basically going to have to take on KISS. KISS is going to prove they've been using the the term much longer than you have. It's, and it's in your best interest not to take on KISS. Yeah, yeah you're KISS. not you're not going to win. You're not going to win that. Yep. yep. Somebody, who's got the deeper pocket? So, yeah, there you go. Can we, can we put this to freaking rest now forever? Ace doesn't own his makeup. He hasn't owned it. Peter doesn't. He hasn't owned it. Doesn't matter how it was sold, when it was sold. People were like, oh, they got coerced into it. They did not get coerced into it. They had lawyers. lawyers They had lawyers. Even Peter in his book admits his lawyers, he didn't pay as close attention to his lawyers as he should have. And he blamed it on someone else. (laughs) Either way, it wasn't Gene and Paul sitting down with Peter and Ace at a bar saying, hey, Want to sell it to me? Here, shake hands. Good deal. Screwed you. We just screwed. No. Trust me. This went back and forth. There was plenty of lawyers involved in in vetting oh, out these deals and, and clauses. And You can bet your bottom dollar that Peter's attorneys went back and said, no, we want more. We want more. We want more. And maybe he got another 10, 20 percent. But then it came to the fact, much like Peter said in his, I think it's the opening chapter of his book, I don't have any money. What am I going to do? You know what I mean? At some point, Peter just said, "said okay, I'll take the 20%. And they cut the deal. And he was probably happy at the time. He probably thought he got one over. Because keep in mind, he didn't think it, he didn't think ahead. Yeah. He probably he didn't, didn't think that this was going to come about. Me, 
if you're no matter how drug addled you are, or how bad you're, if, if you knew you had something that you were going to be able to reap hundreds of thousands of dollars from, you're not going to give that up. He consciously sold that. He consciously hired an attorney or attorneys to figure this out for him. And I guarantee he told his attorneys, just get me as much money as you can. Because that's exactly how the real world works. And that's exactly what Peter Chris did. And that, now he can't look back and go, oh, Christ. You, you, know? can't, blame, you can't blame Gene and Paul. Listen, if, if it, it, it sort of shows a little difference between Gene and Paul and Ace and Peter. Who has the vision? You know, it's, Paul and Gene had the vision to go, this makeup is worth a lot. We want it. Maybe at the time it wasn't worth as much, but we want it because this is our identity. They had the vision to want to own that. If if Ace and Peter knew it was valuable, they would have licensed it to Gene and Paul. That gets you a lot more money, a lot more control over the long run to well, license I don't even, it. I don't think they knew that all of this was going to transpire when they when they gave it. I mean, do they you did. really think they're going to go, oh, geez, and... You know, after we leave the band, they're going to put Eric Singer and Tommy Thayer into our makeup. Geez, I really wish I would have done that. I think they thought when they get when they gave it to Kiss and sold it to Kiss that that was going to be it. It was never going to be used again, and life was going to go on. And they wouldn't, you know, they didn't. They they, they didn't. They didn't have the vision to see no. that Kiss could last beyond the four original they guys. Yeah, no because you know, they never thought that they thought the makeup was going to come off, and that was going to be the end of it. So and, 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 and frankly, I love to I love to tell the people who bitch about Gene and Paul using the makeup. I'm like, who sold it to begin with? Who who felt that that makeup was worth more? Had had less va <laughs> Is is the kitty cat coming back in? <laughs> My husband making stupid comments. <laughs> you know, <laughs> is they, they were more than willing to take money over the legacy of their makeup. But they were desperate. That's where it ended with those two guys. So fans, if if it means more, if the makeup of Ace Frehley means more to you than it does to Ace, the problem is not Gene and Paul. The problem is Ace. He sold it. He took money. He put a value on it and said, I'm willing to take X amount for this makeup. That's how much it means to me. Don't get mad that the person who now owns it is using it in a way you don't like. Get mad at the person who sold it, because he didn't have to. Boom! Yep. Boom! <laughs> Take harsh that, reality, people! Harsh reality. Yep. Take that slap in the face. And you know we can cascade right now into our next topic. And uh, yeah, and I'm gonna I'm gonna get to that. I'm not sure how many of you have seen. Uh, last weekend, Peter was at DW Drums. He no longer plays Pearl, hasn't played Pearl in a while. Peter was a guest at, uh, a, I think it was a Guitar Center in sponsored uh, uh, DW um, DW Drums. Day, I think is what they call yeah, it. Yeah, at, at, in, in New York. And Peter was among a few uh, celebrity drummers. I think Roger Earl was there too, who I'm actually a big fan of. Um, but Peter was there. And meeting, he met a bunch of fans. And Peter sat down, and there was just happened to be a kit set up there. Obviously, a DW drum set. A small kit. It wasn't. Yeah, a, it wasn't pieces. Peter Chris's Kiss drum kit. It was just a small a, demo a regular, kit. They call them trap kits. It was just a five piece, two toms, floor, snare, bass, and just a couple of cymbals. And Peter sat down, and I tell you what, I thought he played fine. He. Very jazz. It, it, it was just, very much a jazz feel to it. Just kind of jammed around like any drummer would who sat behind a kit, especially a kit that is not yours. Because trust me, um, if you're a guitar player or a drummer out there, you know playing on someone else's equipment is not easy. Especially a drummer. I've been playing drums almost 40 years. If things aren't my height, and matter of fact, if you look at the end of Peter's clip, Sitting this, the rims a couple of times. I mean, things aren't set up the way he's used to. Kind of was like this with up. his hand. Yeah, and plus his, you know, his his carpal, carpal tunnel. tunnel. But he played fine. But what do you think you see an avalanche of? Well, here you know, I, I, I want to give you a, a, an actual quote. So first of all, we posted the video on our Facebook page. So you can go back to our Facebook page. 
um, for this past week, and you'll be able to find it. But there was one quote, and you probably read this, and this is probably what, what set you off. Um, Gary Ahrens. Hey, Gary. I'm sure you're listening. I don't know if you're a fan, but you're at least listening. <laughs> Um, Gary says, boy, does he really suck. I could blow him away on a bad day, and I normally play guitar. And then I want to read his follow-up comment because there was. we'll get into a couple things that happened in between these comments. But then he followed that up with, really, Mike, you can't see how sad this is. He just needs to give it up. Didn't you read his boar fest of a book? Wine, wine, wine. I'm the better musician. I had the biggest hit. Wine, wine, wine. Stop and think for a second. What was Gary's first comment here? Whining about how Gary's the better musician. <laughs> so I'm sorry, Gary, but you're whining just like Peter. But but to Mark's point, I could blow him away on a bad day. Are you freaking kidding me? Well, there's there's so much in in that. There's so much to talk about. In there's this. so much Number jealousy one, in a statement like that. Correct, but but what what his tone was is what bothers me. I'm like, guys, this guy walked in, professional musician or not, sat behind the kit, jammed for literally ninety seconds. Played fine. If you walk, if you didn't, if Peter Chris never existed in your mind, and you walked in and you saw a gentleman of his age, what, playing sixty eight now. Well, that's my point. If you would have just seen him. You would have went, "Hey, that guy played pretty guy's good. Got some flow yeah, to him. Stops. He's got yeah. some nice feel." Guys, he's not out there going, okay, this is it. I'm auditioning because I'm better than Neil Pert. I'm better than. Whoever, watch me play. It's not the drum solo from Alive or Alive 2. Guys, please. He's sitting down, just having a go, having fun in front of, I'm sure, just a few people, just having a good time. Why do people start with the, oh my God, he, you know, he doesn't have this or he couldn't do. Guys, it's 90 seconds of a guy who's been playing drums since he was in his teens, who's now almost 70 playing it's no more or no less if you want to ask me about or, or talk about i don't think he could play a two-hour set or you look you can't judge anything on that 90 seconds it's just a man who's a musician sitting down playing he played fine like i said in my post i'm happy that made me happy to see peter who looked happy Playing the drums. That's why I shared it. B believe me, I've said more than my fair share about Peter and not being able to play in Kiss. But I saw that and I was just like, "This, this is cool. This is good. Yeah. I'm, I'm sharing this." And and dude, I mean, literally to sit here and say he sucks and he needs to give it up. Clearly, you hate Peter Chris. He hasn't been in the band for how long? So you got your wish anyway. So what are you bitching about? He's not in KISS. He isn't playing in KISS. But also, then you've got the other side. That's it. Peter should be in the I band. know. Those, those are just as bad. Like, it's equally as stupid. <laughs> You're right. Yeah, he, See, he's got the chops. He should... One more show. Dude, it's so 90 seconds. And not yet. 90 seconds, you're going to, instead of just judging it for what it is, a, a man sitting down playing his drum kit for 90 seconds... It's a not a look into the future. It's also not a look into the past. It's a look into a gentleman sitting down, playing drums in front of some friends. He had a smile on his face. He looked happy. He was more than competent. He didn't embarrass himself. And now if he would have went up there and, and was shaky and could barely, but that's not what he did. He had nice flow. Go watch that. Yeah, go watch he even it. Switched, he even temporarily switched to a nice little traditional grip there on yep. the top. Yep. Guys, like I said, if 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 you want to be honest with yourself, go there, watch it. And, and it should put a smile on your face. And it should put a smile on your face for the same reason that I brought up. This is a gentleman almost 70 years old who's sitting down doing something he loves. 
And he did it well for the 90 seconds for the few people there. What is there to criticize? Like I said again, I just said, boy, that made me happy. And, and you know what? I got a lot of likes for that, too. And obviously, that's never the point. But yeah, I'm glad a lot of people did see it, by the way. But then, like I said, you start reading through the comments and people are throwing in things that don't need to be in the conversation. It should have went really no more than I would have been happy just seeing 20 people. Going, wow, that was cool seeing Pete play. It was cool. Well, yeah, and part of it was, listen, the guy has been out of the spotlight for the most part since he left Kiss. So to, to so- find something where he actually sat down and was playing, I was like, this is kind of, it was cool to see Pete sit down behind a kit and play a little something. That was, hey, that's Peter Chris of Kiss. Mm-hmm. Whether you liked him or not, whether you want him in the band or not, it's Peter Chris of Kiss. And he's sitting down playing a little something on the drum kit. That was cool. That You know, back to our very beginning discussion, this was that little tidbit that as a Kiss fan I was craving to find something like this. I mean, you're right. It should go no more than, it should have been no further than, oh, that was kind of cool to see Peter sitting down and doing something. He looked good. He played good. What more do you want? Stop using it to push an agenda of get him back in the band. Make sure he, he sucks. He could never. Dude, it, it, this is not what it's about. Yeah, just be happy. Be, be happy. He's, he's, he's still alive. He looked great. He, he, he looked like he was having fun. Done. Because trust me. He's not going to be in Kiss anytime soon. He may not want to go back into Kiss for all we know. I mean, but, frank, frankly, I'm I'm happy to see that he's kept himself out of the mud slinging spotlight that's happened between Gene and Paul and Ace. And, and, and Peter has just sat back and let them take all that crap and all the mud. And total respect for Peter. That's taken the high road. Exactly. Which also, two segues into... Uh, then something that we posted too, Michael. They just played in front of thousands, tens of thousands of people a couple nights ago, and they're playing again tonight. And I think Adelaide, Kiss is Gene, Paul, Eric, and Tommy. And that's that Kiss is still doing very well. And that is in who that is who is in Kiss. And if you're a Kiss fan and you're here, hopefully you're supporting that Kiss. That kiss does well. That 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 kiss has two great albums under their belt. They've got many world tours under their belt. That's who Kiss is. And let's listen. This show, we'll make a blanket statement. This show supports Kiss of 2015. And if that pisses you off, then Shoot. don't listen to the show because this show is not about being fair and about giving opinions to everybody we're not a fair and impartial show we're a show about the three of us we have our opinions here we're gonna we, over time we'll, we'll pick up on what lisa's opinions are of kiss so if you don't like what we're saying and it pisses you off go no one's Leave. forcing you to listen Believe me, it's not going to break our hearts that you don't watch the show anymore. It's not going to break our hearts that you click the unlike button on our Facebook page. I love getting those fans. I'm getting into talk. I'm clicking the unlike and leaving. Dude, basically, yeah. don't let the door hit you hit you in the ass on the way out. I don't care. You know, this is who we are from day one. I guess it's now when I started this show. It was all about opinion. This is what we want to say. Well, Michael, and if you don't like it, it, tough. It goes deeper than that. Like I said, I was a Kiss fan in the fall of 1974. I'm a Kiss fan in the fall of 2015. Were there times that they tried my patience? You bet, Crazy Nights. And, <laughs> and there was times I was just wondering. I really did. I'm like, but you know what? It's still... At the time, it's still Gene and Paul. It's it, when I went to the shows. I don't ever. I didn't walk out of a a Kiss show unhappy until the reunion tour, or excuse me, farewell tour. I I saw all those tours. I saw the, you know, I saw the Hot in the Shade tour. I hated the album, but damn, I loved the tour. 
You know what I mean? So for someone who's been there and always supported um, everything, this this is uh, this is just a you know this is just a continuation. Is your meatloaf of it. arriving? No, my beautiful wife just arrived. I said hi. And she's talking to my beautiful daughter. All right, I'm gonna let you go. Oh well, let's keep it clean, people. <laughs> <laughs> no, no skin masks. <laughs> Lisa's with us today. Hi, Lisa. <laughs> Hi, Liz. Hi. <laughs> oh, I love her. She's so wonderful. She is awesome. <laughs> she is. Well, so you'll anyway. see a lot of her every week now. <laughs> anyways so, Any, uh, anyway so yeah i mean come on people chill up chill the chill the f out it was just a cool fun short little peter chris video i don't want him back in the band but that doesn't mean it wasn't fun to watch that and i'm not going to sit here and say f this and screw that and i'm fucking better than him Hey, Gary, I'm still waiting for you to tell me how well your career is doing. Yeah, I said, like I said, I don't want to give that, that, that kind of stuff. I, why even give him the time? I love it. It's just, I, that's what I love doing. It's like, I'm still waiting. I'm still waiting. How, how's, how successful has your career been? You can play better than Peter? Awesome. How many people are coming to your show? Where are you playing? When are you, what did I say? When are you coming to California so I can go see your band live in concert? Oh, boy. Oh, boy. <laughs> So, on so, <laughs> uh, um, so another topic. Today is the sixth anniversary of Sonic Boom mm -hmm. from Kiss 2015. That's their their first album that they put together. Um, yeah, you know what? Um, I think it was '09. Yeah, '09 it came out. I tell you what, I, I was so nervous for this one to come out because I I was nervous and excited because keep in mind I liked like I, I liked the Rock the Nation tour. I liked all I just I was like, what kind of music are were they gonna go for the cheesy eighties? I, I just didn't know. Well, let's also keep in mind for a couple years leading up to this, they were very they, Gene and Paul, were very vocal about saying we don't think Kiss will ever record another album again. The music industry is in the crapper. Record labels are over. The business has been destroyed. There's no reason for us to do it. So it was basically, I I had accepted the fact there would never be more Kiss music except greatest hits and live albums. Well, that's what I was talking about because I was hoping, and when we talked about it on the show before, with and I'll use Aerosmith as an example, Aerosmith, to my ears, still haven't went back and captured that sound for a full record. They're still chasing trends, like I said on their last record from a couple years ago, which is their most their latest. Um, they did a, a single with Carrie Underwood. They, they're still trying to find that. They still think it's 1985. They're still find, trying to find the bandwagon to jump onto. Correct. Where Paul said, you know what? No outside writers, no ballads, just the four of us. We're going to sit in a studio and record. And damned if they didn't do a great, great, great job. Hit the ball right out of the park. Once again, musically, take, take, I've said this before, this album is two guitars, bass drums. They're just playing rock music, hard rock music, very in the same vein as the first six records. There's no double bass madness. There's no sappy ballad. They weren't trying to do an, uh, a concept record. They were just being Kiss. Four rock musicians playing rock and roll songs. You know, all whatever, 10 or 12 songs that's there on. Every one of them is just a hard rock song. And uh, to this fan, I couldn't have been any happier. And fortunately, the one they did after it was this, to me, this is the same result, a, another Hit it, hit the park, hit the ball out of the park. Great hard rock album, and you know, that's all I want. I when when Sonic Boom came out, you know, uh, so many fans were like, "Yeah, this definitely has that." Like you said, feels like it fits in the first six albums. I honestly still feel like it's more of an '80s Kiss record than a '70s Kiss record. It feels 
more like a Paul Stanley produced Kiss record from the '80s than. Oh, I disagree. Just just the songwriting well, sucks. No, so I don't care. There's no there's no King of the Mountain on here. There's no reason to live. No, on. I'm not. I'm not saying there there are those songs. I'm just saying it felt like to me something that would have fit more in place in the '80s than it would have. I don't. Than, I don't. Than, a, than a Destroyer, bitch. Rock and Roll Over. I don't, I, I, I I do give. I think it's great that 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 Paul basically laid down the entire law on this of, listen, if we are going to record, I'm the boss. This is not Gene and Paul. This is Paul Stanley producing. And I love the fact that he forced Gene to deliver the goods when it came to songwriting. I think the between Sonic Boom and Monster, to me, the, the greatest thing was Gene's songwriting was phenomenal, I think, on those two albums. I think he's, he hit the ball out of the park better than anybody else on any of the songs on those two albums. I, I think Gene was not the 80s Gene, by all means. He well, was back and focused in his songwriting. I've said it before. If you look at the song like Hell or Hallelujah, that could have been on Love Gun. That type of song could have been on Love Gun. And I even look at a song like Nobody's Perfect or uh, or Hot or Cold. That could have been on Love Gun. It's just the bouncy, fun kiss. It's not, you know, and then I, I listen to I'm from Monster, something like uh, Back to the Stone Age. He totally ripped off the MC5 on that. Just, you know, it was just, it was relentless, hard rock fun. There's nothing calculated about either one of these records, and that's what I like about them so much. Oh, I, I, I agree. You know, they the, were trying like they did on Psycho Circus, which was Aerosmith's fault, too, to trying to be relevant. But you but I, I will also say I bet that's the difference between having label influence and not having label influence. You know, uh, Psycho not, Circus had, had record label paying for it. You know, Sonic Boom was a Walmart deal. So Kiss was basically given a bunch of money, go record an album and deliver it to us. Walmart was just looking at it from other, you know, get get Kiss fans to come in here and buy other crap. That's what the album was for. Hey, can you? I, I don't. Do you? Either one of you? Can you check? Was is Sonic Boom their highest charting record? Lisa, you're our facts person. I was gonna say, hold on. We used Lisa, to have, we, we used to have we used to have a yes man. Now we've got a facts woman. <laughs> Hold on. Hold on one moment, please. <laughs> this is Lisa at the Kiss Desk. Hold on one minute. Hey, hold on one moment. <laughs> please talk amongst yourselves. Why? Please research that. Please, please. I'll be with you momentarily. Thank you. <laughs> um, you know, the one thing that I didn't like was in both albums, and this is, falls more on Gene. I can't stand when they give interviews going... This this is destroyer meets revenge meets the stop yeah. stop with that crap because you're destroying you're well you're not destroying you're already planting expectations seeds of expectations in my head because neither of these albums were destroyer two revenge part two they 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 weren't so don't make it up to be that and stop oh, with the favorite. it's the best album we've ever done. Of course you're going to frickin' say that. You're not going to come out and say, well, we recorded a good album, but it ain't one of our better ones. You know, just stop with all of that stupid hype. I, I tell you what, I, it still drives me crazy when I see people complain about it. And I don't know how many times, especially if I'm in person with someone, I'll, I'll talk about this if it, 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 a kiss function or a rock function. They'll rip on on the two, of, you know, on, on Eric or Tommy. And I'm, I'm like, well, did you listen to it? Oh, I didn't buy it. Well, what are you telling me? It sucks you can't for me. Have an opinion. Uh, you know, it's funny too. Even today on on Nicholas's site, everything Kiss, I I posted a little thing about it. And in his he, you know, basically said, "What do you think of the of the you know of the record? You know, and talk about the songs." How many people that? Oh, the cover. I mean, who fucking cares? It's the it's the album you're talking about. It's not just cover art. Who cares if the co- I personally like the cover art, but. Is it rock and roll over? No, and I know it was done by the same guy. But guys, I don't. I've never judged the music on any record by the fucking album cover. I judged it by what's in the grooves. They peaked at number two. Sonic That's Boom did. Yes. So Sonic Boom 
And with... Monster was number three? Correct. And what? I think Psycho Circus was number three as well, if I remember. So, like I said, that's their highest charting record. I mean, that's quite an accomplishment by, you know, a tribute band if uh, you, you get listen to these other idiots. But but that's my point. Enough people liked it. Enough people are – Kiss is doing quite well. Psycho Cir- – I mean, not Psycho Circus. I'm sorry. Sonic Boom had it, like, grow on me a little bit. Now, why would you say that, Lisa? Because – Anytime I get a new album, I listen to the first 30 seconds of a song and I move like being in being in the record like being on the radio side of things, that's how you would be able to tell 30 seconds of a song. You first listen to the first 30 seconds of a song to see if it has catchy beginning, you know, to make it a single or if that's what we're going to play. So I always listen to the first 30 seconds of every song when I first buy an album, first 30 seconds. And then I'll go through and I'll listen to each song individually, and then I'll go through again, and I'll look at the lyrics, and then I'll go through again, and I'll listen to just the bass, and go through the entire album. Then I'll go, I'm weird. I'm a very strange girl when it comes to listening. You and are messed up big time. I am, because <laughs> I, it'll take me a good week and a half just to listen to an album if I really want to listen to it. And I think at first, um, for the, after the first 30 seconds of each song, to me, it, it all blended together. Now I'm, I'm only going by first thirty seconds. Now, it only each song kind of seemed to start out the same, and then after I listen to each song and I kind of dissected it that way, I kind of listened to the song in its entirety and I really started to like it. But going by what I've learned in school and what I've learned, because I in in a previous life I was an audio engineer back in the day with two inch tape and you had to you splice. You mean you've been re- you reincarnated? I am reincarnated because now I can't use Pro Tools if I tried. But were you were, were you a guy in your previous life, <laughs> or a know, kitty cat? Of all the stuff I've done, it kind of seems to think that I am. But anyway, um, you know that's and it just as time went on, I, and I really started to sit and listen to it. Those last couple times where I listened to the song in its entirety, it really grew on me. But it, it took me it took me some time. Um, I can't instantly listen to something that's amazing. It's, it's awesome. It takes me time to listen to it and to really get um, involved into the song. I know it sounds in-depth and weird, but, I mean, same with, with Monster. I heard it, I heard it, you know, before, you know, I heard a couple snippets here and there and, and the same thing. But those first 30 seconds, it was like, damn, this song is awesome. You know, like uh, Back to the Stone Age, I thought that song was amazing. Mm-hmm. Just Love that. blew me out. I just thought it was awesome. Um, I actually like Monster better than Sonic Boom, um, but it took me a little while to, to like Sonic Boom. But um, I think Modern Day Lo- Delilah's fantastic. Um, when they play it live, I think it's great. But it just took me some time to like it. It wasn't an instantaneous. This is the greatest album ever. But I then think- again, it not, no album really is for me because I have to dissect each song and I have to listen to it very, very intently. I can tell if. If they play a song and they play in a, in a different, if they add a different note, I can tell if they add a different note in it or if they add a different, like, put another chord in there. My husband will play and he'll play a song and I'll say, you messed it up right there. He'll go, how, how, how the hell do you know that? And I said, because I know that solo like the back of my hand. I can tell those little pieces. So it just took me some time to like Sonic Boom, but it, after a while, it grew on me. But, you know. It, well, it's funny. And this is another a conversation for another time. I still think that Say Yeah, had that been on, say, Hot in the Shade, that's a damn good song. I love that song. Yeah. And I still, they were playing it off and on, you know, the last few years. That song is so good that it could have rescued Hot in the Shade because that would have been a good single. When In, in 09, by the time, you know, this album came out, they, you know, just like anybody else, they're the radio stations, even the classic rock stations, they're not playing this. Oh, they're not going to touch it. They wouldn't no, touch it. No, no, <laughs> not at all. And and you know what? It's it's not nice to see, but if you even see everything from Bruce Springsteen on down, you know, nobody plays their new music on but the radio. But you know what? Does Kiss really need it on there? Do they really need their music play on the radio now? I think well, the- they, well, they, 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 so much e- even in the even in the eighties, as as much as they were following trends, they were not a huge radio band. Yeah. Well, you know, I'll be fair. They 
they were know, getting radio airplay, but they were not a huge radio band. You know where you really hear Kiss's influence now more than ever is on satellite radio. I hear Kiss all the time. Well, on, I mean, now, now, now you will hear them on classic radio stations, but you will hear classic Kiss. Yeah. You know, yes. I mean, I mean, you know, again, growing up in the '70s and into the '80s. It was a rarity to hear Kiss on the radio. Even to hear rock and roll all night was rare to hear a radio station do it back then. Now you've got, you know, rock and roll all night, shout out loud, love gun. I mean, those are staples that you'll hear. You 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 know any rock station has got those in their, their rotation all the time. Go ahead, Mark, I'm sorry. You gotta thank Gene and Paul's perseverance for that too. Because they kept the name alive. I don't think without them staying in the business that they, I mean, let's face it, uh, you know, at and it's here in Detroit, but Lions game, they always played at Troy Rock City and shouted out loud. The Red Wings games, they play the beginning of every single game they play Detroit Rock City. And and if we're winning usually with two minutes left in the, the last period, they'll play rock and roll night. And it's not uncommon to have the whole arena singing along. So, I mean, their music, you know, it, it accord here. It's still, and it continues to this day. So, you know, pretty lucky that way just as a fan. But really now, the legacy, when I turn on Sirius XM and I hear them on, you know, everything from uh, Ozzy's Boneyard to Hair Nation to uh, the uh, whatever, Classic Rewind or whatever, you hear them, and here in, in Detroit on the rock stations, they play them. They play them on the on the. Uh, and I know you guys in each city usually. Are, I think ours is Doug, right, Liz? Yeah. Our FM radio station that plays like they'll play Kiss and Aerosmith. And, and Doug, remember, Doug, oh, oh, yeah. Anyways, but the same thing. We still have a local station that plays. You know, you won't. You'll still hear. A yeah. classic rock station. Yeah, yeah, we have uh, three of them actually, and it's not un- it's not uncommon to hear Detroit Rock. I hear Detroit Rock City a lot. I hear, you know, believe it or not, I hear I, I was made for loving you too. So I mean, you know, there's probably a good four or five songs that uh, get airplay here that continue to get airplay on the classic rock stations. We have a we have a station up in Pittsburgh, um, WDVE, who every Friday at noon starts the electric lunch with rock and roll all night. And they've been doing it now for, you know, for as long as that song's been out. It's every Friday at noon. And I listen to it on iHeartRadio. And I'm friends with the DJ. So sometimes I'll just email them and go, hey, you know what, play rock and roll all night for me. So they'll play rock and roll all night for me. Just, and I just listen at noon just so I can hear it. And then, you know, but, you know, that's, that's a mainstay. Every Friday at noon, they start off their Friday with rock and roll all night. Which is awesome, you know. So there you go. No, <laughs> we're speechless. We are actually, you know, we had a, we had almost it wasn't Kiss, but uh, as my lovely and talented over there, no, we used to our weekend DJ used to blow like a foghorn thing and play Weekend Warriors um, probably for a good twenty years. Yeah, it was. <laughs> she just the, the guy would yell, "It's the weekend." And Weekend Warriors would play. This went on for probably 20 plus years until he retired. But that was the six o'clock on Friday. That was played. You know, it's cool. That it's, it's nice to hear Lisa. They had that sort of tradition in uh, in Pittsburgh too. I mean, and they, different. They, have, they always do the beginning of it, and I was there when they taped it. Um, they'll say Gene and Paul come in and do a, a, a PA, and they'll say, "Hey, Yens guys," because that's what we say in Pittsburgh, Yens. Hey, Yens guys, it's Friday. <laughs> And Paul goes, and it's time to eat. And that's when you start off with lunch. So they have either them doing, you wanted the best, you got the best, or it's Gene and Paul doing their PA into, uh, into electric lunch. You know, so it, they kind of, depending on what it is, they'll switch up who introduces the song. But, I mean, that's, that's just so cool. And like I said, I, just, I would just, people would turn on their radio just to hear that at noon. And then, you know, because it was just so cool the way it was, it was just awesome. So I'm partial on Pittsburgh. And oh. you know what, Mark? And it's partial for you because you live in Detroit and you hear that all the time. So I don't want to hear they played at every sporting event because you have an advantage. Okay? That's true. That there is. You, I'm throwing in my two cents. So, Mark, do you have any um, not Spencer's crap for Lisa's first official show? I do. Well, you know, it all depends. You know, I always say it doesn't have to be old to be a classic. 
Now, um, this was very cool because those of you who are KISS collectors, and even if you're not, back in 1980 when KISS did their very first tour of, uh, of Australia, uh, they were making, the company made show bags and they put together this little bag and it had, you know, uh, like a pen, you know, a KISS pen and a comb and a necklace and stickers and all that stuff. Well, 2015. They have uh, the Kiss show bag, um, brand new. It's got, uh, and I, I want to I want to thank Phil Cass who uh, sent this to me. What a great guy! I mean, I'm going to pimp his website. I'm on this all the time, so. I think I'm a tad jealous right now. He's uh, hey, Lisa. He's a, this is your cue. <laughs> of course you do. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. <laughs> We'll steal that line for you. There you go. But yeah. I mean, it came with all this kind of cool stuff. Came What's with that? It, uh, Can you open that? Is, uh, uh, there we go, Lisa. <laughs> <laughs> I get that? Seriously, I want to see what that is. I am <laughs> Come on, will you open it for a pretty girl? It's a kiss. Uh, Liz has already seen it. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Apparently, you're not worthy, Lisa. Okay. Um, this is really cool. Look at all the... What is that? Stickers and uh, you got coasters and playing cards and masks. I want that. Oh, it's awesome! It's awesome. Um, and I did. I did open this. I just wanted to see what it. What it. It's really the lamest shirt ever. But I prove mean, it. Open it. <laughs> I just see a logo. So it right is. Now, yeah, well, that, not... that's all it is. It was a lame shirt. That's but all it is. At all that stuff. And uh, and you got it in a backpack. Now where now how did where does that come from? I mean, from is that Australia. from Australia? Is that, is that the is that a meet and greet thing or is that a what is that? Is it sold at the shows only? Hey, is it sold at record stores? Is where? it for VIP radio people? Um, I tell Basically, you, what, I want to know where I can get one of those. Go to <laughs> go to go to this his Facebook site. Tell him three sides sent you, and he can give you all the information. I don't know if he can get you one, but I mean. Uh, Wait, what's it? I can't see that. I'm blind as a bat. He doesn't have the URL on his sticker. Yeah, all I see is Facebook and Kiss Aussie. Oh, it's and it's Kiss Aussie and Worldwide Collectors. Oh, okay. So go on that. Um, Phil Cass, great, great guy. Um, he was nice enough to, uh, to get that for me. And it's really cool. And the best part about it, it really has a 70s feel. I mean, it's, and, and that's the cool thing about uh, what I liked about it. It's got that Kiss Army kit feel to it. Everything's all packed together. It's well presented. It's really, really cool. I think Kiss should do that. I still think Kiss should do the Kiss Army kits proper. They should do it every year. I mean, because people pay for it. I mean, there's they just need someone to manufacture it. But yeah, the, I always yeah, thought the those problem were, with the Kiss Army now is all it is is a front to get you to buy VIP tickets. Correct, but I still think they should do the. Uh, I uh, think they should do it right. I agree. I think they should. And they, they could should make do one just like this. You know. I think um, that's awesome. I like that a lot. One of the things that we we wanted to do for the show today, we just don't have any time because <laughs> we 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 talked briefly. I uh, speaking. Look at that. Just the first one. This is just how weird coincidence. The, the official nineteen. You know, I, I I hate to say this, but I'm being legit here. You have to take the plastic wrap off because all we get is big glares. Did you look at the time? <laughs> I mean, isn't that right, Lisa? It's just a, it is it, a big glaring. It's a big it's a big glare on the front of it because of the plastic. I have, I'm like this trying. I can see right now. There's there's like, like, I can see it any now. glare. Well, yeah, because you're holding it at a huge angle now. That's right, and you get to see it. <laughs> I actually think there's an ad for the original show bags on here. I'm gonna see. Oh. Now, 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 hold it up. Let's see the difference at the cover without the plastic. Oh, much better. Quit crying. I, I just want the best for our listeners. That's right. The for fan, our the, listeners, the, the fans will take anything you give you give them, but the listeners you. demand. Let me see. I I want to see if there's a show bag advertisement in this. I don't think there is. I thought there was original, and I'm like, eh. There's not, but there is like, uh, there is some cool ads in here, though. Oh, oops, look at this. This wasn't so much for the show bags, but I think it's the same company. Mm 
the uh, the cereal, which I do have the box, by the way. Lisa? Of course you do. <laughs> <laughs> Give her a couple more shows. She'll get the this timing is, oh, down. Oh, look at this. Look at this. I, I did find the Maybelline bags. Ooh. Ooh. Do you have that? Mark? Yeah, of course I do. Oh. I don't think that's the the proper show bag, but there was the Maybelline bag, which is which was different. This is a great magazine, by the way. Oh, look at this! They've, they, you know, they had some extra stock here. Look what they were doing. Oh, <laughs> we'll take it down to Australia. A They'll collector's item. What does it say? Never before available in Australia. Yep. Kind of like the solo albums when they couldn't sell them, they released them in uh, in the UK. Like, hey, direct from America. So, uh, this is you know, I was I, like, once again, this is one of my favorites. Look at a great ad for the for the original ice cream, and this is cool. Look at all the different iron-ons they had back then. Oh, those iron-ons were so cool. Oh, I know a ton of them. Anyways, uh, we were going to get to the, maybe we'll we'll do that. You know, go through a bunch more mag because I I just grabbed a box. I I literally have over a thousand with just show us one. Show us one mags. more. Just randomly close your eyes and pick one. Well, I, I I grabbed two out by accident. This one was cool because it advertised Kiss and the Bay City Rollers, and there's like no Bay City Rollers. In Which it. Like, do you? Yeah, they're, did, they're right there in the little. No, no, no. But my point is, it's almost all. Dead. Did you hear that the Bay City Rollers are getting back together? I did. Hey, look, I like a couple of their tunes. Now, this is why you gotta love Japanese magazines. Look at that freaking ad. And this first page in. This is why you collect that stuff. You know, I have so many of those Japanese magazines, but it pissed me off because I couldn't read them. <laughs> and that was like I, I love reading them. And I was like, shit, yeah. Yeah, they are. Uh, they are. At, uh, this is a, a big fave of mine. I love this one. Uh, trying to find. There's some really cool stuff in here. <laughs> I, I love because the the translation climax just, of oh, hell. <laughs> So <laughs> that's awesome. It is awesome. So that's what I mean. There's Hi. so many. There's so many of these things that these, the translations hell. just get totally. This is funny too. They have a, a whole thing on how to paint your face up like them. I, this is this came out in '77. This is really really cool. It's from Japan. You see this? I see this one on eBay every now and then. This is a great magazine. You get a chance to pick it up. There's so much more to it too. It's just uh, really, really cool. Let's see if we can find some more funny, funny stuff. And once, oh, this is too cool too because I remember when I first started collecting these, they were selling bootlegs too, like through record shops, and they were always advertised in the in the back. <laughs> then you get to see these bands that you're like, how did Flintlock? Who are these guys? Is that the lamest looking band ever? Like, who would sign them? So, anyways, uh, just that. Ca Ca Casablanca, probably. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Anyways, so, uh, you know, that's all I got. So, homework for this week. We had a lot of different topics. Anybody got any evidence to prove that Ace owns his makeup? Hmm. Look at Mark. Hmm. Hmm. You don't say. Hmm. 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 Mark's chin hair. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. Um. We could do that. We can do any evidence that Ace Fraley owns his makeup. The Ankh Warrior. <laughs> Uh. Um. Let's see. We talked about Peter Chris. Anything on that? I don't know. Boy, look at a lot of dead air. Lisa, let's go. Come on. You got to fill. Come on. I, I know okay. this. Is everybody, your... I think everybody needs to watch the Peter Chris video. 
<laughs> All right. So let actually let's force let's force this on Lisa. You've got to come up with homework for this week. Wow, that's really putting me on the spot. It is. Hold on. Go. Go. Talk no. amongst yourselves until I can think. Well, that uh, you're, 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 you're the one that's supposed to put us on hold. Please that's wait. Right. This is the big. This is the big time show here. <laughs> you got to come prepared, oh, please. You have to come prepared. Hold on one moment. Yeah, you see, yeah, you see how much preparation we put. <laughs> we talked about Peter Chris. We talked about Ace Fraley. We talked about Sonic Boom. We talked about Couple Kiss magazines. Um, we Talk talked. About we Showback. talked about um, Paul's solo gig. We talked about. Um, Douchebag is Gene. Gene, here. This is, could be a good one. What do you think Gene's heart is? Is his heart having the final four end the band, or isn't it? Not, not reality, because we know reality is different. What's in his heart? That's a good one. You were supposed to come up with it, Lisa. I know, but that was a good. One, I, could, I could, I could, I could, I could see she was panicking. I was I was thinking, Mike. That's thinking. It's hard, in depth thinking. That's right, because someone's got to analyze this. Analyze. We have the deep, best analyzing deep. of any show. Deep, deep analysis. Uh, you know, if you're gonna if you're gonna keep holding that chair down moving forward, you have got to be on it. I like the Gene Simmons um, one because that's, that's all right. So one. so like let's do that th one. This week's homework comes from Richard Friend. Do people think in Gene's heart he wishes the band would end with the original four? Does the fan in him see that as the perfect ending for Kiss? This is basically a huge what-if question. We don't care about reality and the f what's happened and the Hall of Fame and who hates who. In his heart, is that what he wishes to see? That's a good one. And don't just say yes or no. Lisa wants to see. I want explanations. explanations. I want analysis. <laughs> Analyzing by you. Analyzing. <laughs> I think that's a really good question because that's that, it's thought provoking. All right. Just remember, though, next week you have to come prepared and be okay. ready to throw out a homework question. Damn. Okay. I do homework. I got to do homework. I'll come with my glasses and a notebook. <laughs> and work Matt. on the work, you got to work on the timing with Mark. I'll get I'll get there. You'll get there. You'll get you there. Because I was so focused on what he was doing, I was trying to pay it. I was like, oh shit, I missed my cue. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you know, you you know, as 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 the Ed McMahon of the show. <laughs> <laughs> Ed McMahon. <laughs> Do I have to drink a lot for to be the Ed McMahon of the show? He was Ch always drunk on Johnny Carson. You remember? just got to chuckle a lot and be right there to put that zinger in when it's needed. <laughs> I thought she was the Ginger Z. Who's Ginger Z? <laughs> weather lady, whatever you want to call me. Ginger yeah. Z's the hot uh, uh, weather chick over on ABC News. Yes. I Not mean, on my ABC News. <laughs> My, even my even Liz knows uh, knew that reference, and she used to be on the Weather Channel. Mike, let's go. Come on, what? you got to pick up on these things. This is this is like what I, you call. I, I have a life. I don't watch the Weather Channel. Don't you want to know about current weather activity? <laughs> That's right. My work outside. I, I, your I, I have one of these things that tells me about the weather. I got one of these. It just goes beep. Oh, I know. Oh, that phone. <laughs> That phone is terrible. Indy? Remember in India, I was like, oh, they were totally I right know. about that phone. Trust me, everybody gives me you help. Can't, you everybody. can't hear Mark when he talks to you on those th and that thing. I, I heard him okay. Do, did I, do I, am I married to both of you? Because it's the same shit I get all the time at home. <laughs> <laughs> I can never hear you. <laughs> Trust me, I, you're absolutely right. I got to get a new one. It's brutal. It's br I, literally everybody I talk to says that to me. You know, can I just, I, the can jitterbug I, is what I need. The one oh, my God. All the giant the fingers. Where, the, where yeah. the, the buttons are this big. Yes, that's what I need. And I just need, I remember. You need this, the one like, that puts 
a face on each button. Yes. Well, it's funny because I went, I remember sitting there because this phone's like almost five years old. And I remember going to get the phone. And she's like, well, this one plays. And I'm like, no, no, no. I want one when people call me and it rings or beeps. She goes, well, this one plays. that." No, 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 you don't understand. I don't want one that plays games and sings songs. You know, at don't the time. Don't you want I'm, one that will play alive every time the phone rings? Now, that would be a perfect phone. But no, honestly, I don't want that on my phone. I hate this technology. I just hate. You, I want you are so much or- like Gene Simmons. Oh. I know, Mark. I know where you're coming from. I mean, my husband's like, well, like I have the whatever this phone is. The I think it's two below what there is now. He's like, don't you want to upgrade your phone? I'm like, no, it's great. I mean, it does it does what it needs to do. It dials out, calls in, that looks like it. a freaking deck of cards in Look your hand. That. That well, she needs that because how else are we going to get our information? Like exchanging money and exchange <laughs> rates and, and checking <laughs> wiki and. <laughs> Putting some of that VOD money over to her so she can uh, come up with that stuff right away. That's that's oh, that's gosh. look at that. That is the uh, that's the three sides computer. That's all we exactly. got. Exactly. <laughs> that's it. That's all you get. All right. And my little handy all, right. all right, all right, everybody. You know, you know your homework. The Gene Simmons. Where's his heart? What's he want the band to end with? In his heart, not in his head, not in his wallet. In his heart. That's your homework. Facebook.com slash three sides of the coin, three sides of the coin.com, YouTube, Spreaker, SoundCloud, wherever else we are. And uh, this has been an exciting rebirth in this new episode, hasn't it? <laughs> Jazz hands. Yeah, Jazz I hands. Know that, so. <laughs> Jazz hands. Can she do the shocker? <laughs> Whoa. Something hot about a woman doing the shocker. I can do the spocker. The spocker. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to do it. Oh, God. I'll do it. Hold on. Hold on. That, there it goes. That'll really shock her. All right. All yeah. right. <laughs> Three sides. Out. We're out. <laughs> Later, guys. Peace. Take three sides of the coin with you anywhere. Download your five-star rated free smartphone app today and listen on your Android or Apple smartphone. Visit android.threesidesofthecoin.com or ios.threesidesofthecoin.com. Want to get your official Three Sides of the Coin logo and Shocker tee? Now you can. We ship worldwide. Get yours online at shop.threesidesofthecoin.com. For interviews and media inquiries, contact Izzy at izzypresleyproductions.com. Download your free free copy of the KISS School of Marketing. 11 Lessons I Learned Working with KISS. The number one downloaded business book on Noise Trade. Go to books.noisetrade.com slash Michael Brandvold. You're listening to Three Sides of the Coin. So you love the show. Go to itunes.threesidesofthecoin.com and leave your review and rating of Three Sides of the Coin. Thanks.